So today is the 7th of January and we're talking about uh, filtration types. Uh, we're here at the reef tank at the Ocean Explorium and uh, I'm going to try and speak up because I noticed that on the videos with all those shh pumps and everything it kind of sounds like <laughs> like Charlie Brown's Christmas or something. So um, we have, uh, we'll talk about the basic types of filtration and then how they're applied at this aquarium, and then a little bit about how they're applied differently on the other aquariums, but we we'll mostly do focus on this aquarium today. And you guys are going to come up with some great questions, and you guys are going to come up with some great questions, and then do this, write them in uh, below the video, and then send them in. Like when you're watching the video, you're going to be like, well, that doesn't make sense what he said. I don't understand, or I thought about this. You type in the question, and then we can talk about it on a video. Uh, I really want to do that. So, uh, what types of filtration are there? There is biological filtration, uh, which mostly means bacteria processing nitrogen. Um, could also mean sponges or algae uh, processing nitrogen and other nutrients. There's uh, mechanical filtration, which is like our filter socks. It's just catching particles. Um, it's like a physical trapping of particles. Um, I'm not really fully awake yet. <laughs> and and uh, so uh, biological, mechanical, chemical filtration uh, would be like these two canisters up here where you have like activated carbon or charcoal where it's absorbing bad stuff out of the water like organics or heavy metals or chlorine. Um, and, uh, then we have uh, ferric oxide, which is great for pulling uh, phosphates out of the water. Phosphates being a big nutrient uh, could cause all kinds of algae to go crazy in the aquarium, like we don't want it to. Uh, so there are all kinds of other resins you can put on aquariums that are just basically different types of chemical sponges uh, for pulling out bad stuff. Like if you, you could treat an aquarium with copper to treat a parasite problem, and then you want the treatment is over because it's only supposed to last for so many days and then you want to end it. So you can either replace all the water, which is pretty drastic, or you can just put carbon on and it just sucks out all the, all the copper. So biological filtration, chemical, uh, mechanical um, are the main ways. There's, there's one other type which is a little out of this morning, but the other way would be like sterilization. Um, and, and on this aquarium we have uh, the uh, UV sterilizer, ultraviolet sterilizer. Um, and what this unit is doing is it's uh, a germicide. So as the aquarium water passes through this chamber, it's blasted with uh, the uh, spectrum of sunlight that causes cancer, UVC. There's UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is the really bad stuff, and so when we put on our sunblock, it's blocking out UVC. This bulb inside there makes UVC. So as the aquarium water passes through there, we pass it through there slow enough so that the water is just getting baked. Basically, we're sun we're sun burning to death all the bad bugs. Um, so it's really good at killing kills. Uh, waterborne algae really easily, so if you didn't have this, your aquarium could turn green, especially with a lot of lights. You have green water. It kills bacteria, waterborne bacteria, and it also kills parasites. Uh, fish, uh, if you got fish, you got parasites. Period. No matter how great you are at quarantining. Um, and we don't do a really intensive quarantine here. I don't really believe very s strongly in. Uh, that type of quarantine, but that's for another, another talk. Um, fish always have parasites in them. They come in with them in their gut or they're on them. And uh, parasites basically live either on the fish or they're in the substrate, dormant, or they're hatching and their larvae are swimming looking for a fish. And the UV sterilizer can kill the larvae when they're swimming. So the great thing about the UV sterilizer is it's a great preventative type of filtration to sterilize from bad things getting out of um, another type of filtration we have, um, it's a, a form of, a way of exporting waste is the protein skimmer. 
Um, have we talked about that? Yeah, but it's past videos. Keep going. So, the protein skimmer is uh, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's it's kind of a cool toy uh, for people who take care of brand. This is kind of a you know, uh, it's neat. And what it does is just copying what happens at like a waterfall or at the beach. When you ever see like you ever been to a waterfall and you see at the base there's this nasty brown foam off to the side, or you go to the beach and waves are really crashing, and there's white foam where the waves are crashing, but up on the beach. There's a brown foam that's pushing up. So what happens is oils, organics, and proteins, they collect on the surface of the water. It's, you know, oil and water don't mix kind of thing. And uh, they want to stick to that air-water interface. So if you take the surface of the water, and then all of a sudden you crash it on top of itself, like a waterfall or a wave crashing, you trap all this air, and all, the, all this air goes into the solution or it makes all these bubbles. So now also we have a jillion little air water interfaces. So that scum that was on the surface, the surface is now gone because you created it crashed this wave. Now you have these air bubbles. So it sticks to the air bubbles. And the air as the air bubbles pop, all the nasty organics and oils and proteins start to collect. And this protein sniffer is popping. We have all this nasty foam here. Um, that as the aquarium water goes into the protein skimmer, there's a pump that's just injecting loads of air bubbles. The smaller the bubbles, the better. And as the water goes in, gravity pulls the water down, and then the bubbles are buoyant, so they want to go up. And as they go up, they collect all these uh, organics and proteins. They start to pop, and they collect. So the foam at the top is the darkest. And uh, it's, I mean, it's a brown, it's poop. It's <laughs> another way you could look at it. Um, and it concentrates it into this liquid, this syrup here that is basically sewage. Uh, it smells like sewage, it smells like rotten eggs. Uh, and this thing, great thing about this filter is that it removes waste 24 7 while it's running. You can accomplish the thing, same thing by changing the water. It's kind of drastic and it's expensive and it's labor intensive. This thing is just running all the time. So imagine if I took, um, and by the way, we have this waste collector here, this bucket that can get full of this nasty, it smells like sewage because it is. Imagine if I took all that brown, nasty liquid and I poured it into this beautiful aquarium. Like you just made his face like, ugh, right? <laughs> because you think, like, oh my god, it'll put the whole aquarium. But 20 years ago, before the internet, 15 years ago, before the internet was every, everywhere, people couldn't keep this type of aquarium very consistently because this filter wasn't very common. So the fish were swimming in all that sewage. And you couldn't keep corals like this because corals can't hang with really high nutrient loads like that. The last one is this, this filter here. Um, it's uh, the way corals grow is they basically pull minerals out of the water column and they build their, their skeleton, whether it's a soft coral or a stony coral. And they're pulling minerals out of the water column to build their skeletons. And what this reactor does is it's copying a phenomenon in nature. So where do all the minerals come from? In the ocean, for the corals to build their skeletons. It basically comes from two places. It comes from rain landing on Idaho, and then it dissolves Idaho into the ocean. That's how the oceans get salty, right? The other way uh, minerals get into the ocean, I mean, you could say underwater volcanoes. And, you know, another way is like around the coral reefs, so that you get deep down in the sediments, um, these calcium carbonate based sediments are start to break down because the pH gets really low uh, down in the sediment. When you get down to less than one part per thousand of oxygen, anoxic. Not anaerobic, meaning no oxygen, but anoxic, low, super low starts to break it up, you see all these gas bubbles every once in a while, the substrate will fart, you know, and a little air bubble will come out of the sand. Um, that's nitrogen being released because it's denitrifying and it's dissolving this stuff into solution. It's dissolving old coral skeletons and oolitic sand um, into solution. This thing is copying that phenomenon. This reactor takes carbon dioxide, dissolves the old coral skeletons in the solution so we can make new ones. Ask a question. Type it in. Hit enter. Bye.